Good afternoon, everyone. It's indeed a privilege to be here to celebrate the life of someone who would have touched the lives of many. And all you have to do to die is just to live. But the question was asked, will a man live again after death? And it's a question that all of us who are alive should ask ourselves. And I think the question was answered because after death comes the judgment. So death may be final on this, in this life, but after death, there is life. And so this afternoon, we are here. I know in, it's not a capacity in which we would have loved to be because death is always hard to fathom, especially for those of the bereaved. And we are here to, to support them in this time of their bere bereavement because it's always tough when you lose a loved one. And so, on behalf of the pastor and members of the Ebenezer SDA, of which Maria was a member, we want to extend our condolences to the family. And on behalf of the family, I want to welcome you here this afternoon. Afternoon, I pray as we celebrate together that the good God of heaven will bring comfort to the Biri family. Good afternoon to everyone. I invite you to stand with me at this time as we seek the Lord in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. This evening, Lord, we pause one more time to worship you, to praise you, dear Lord. Despite, O oh God, death have strike our family this evening, O oh God, we can still praise you. We can still uplift your name, O oh God, for your goodness and for your mercies. Lord, we are so thankful that even though death strike, O oh God, that there will be, O oh Lord, one of these days, a great resurrection morning, dear Lord. So the Apostle Paul encouraged us, O oh God, not to sorrow as those who have no hope, because there will be a resurrection there, Lord. O oh God, I pray this evening, Lord, that you will comfort all of us this evening, friends and family members, O oh God, of Sister Maria, their father. We pray, O oh God, this evening that you will stand by us, O oh God, Death, Lord, leave us broken. It leave us empty. But we are so thankful, Lord, that through it all, we can still look to you for strength and courage to keep us on, dear Father. And, oh God, this evening we pray that as a people, Lord, we recognize that these days death is striking fast and furious, dear God. And we need to make our calling an election show, dear Father. We thank you, O oh God, that Sister Maria, even as she lay on her bed, O oh God, she made that confession, Lord, and she acknowledged you 
as Lord and Savior, dear Father. And she was determined, oh God, to trust you, to serve you, Lord. And she recognized that when everything around her fails, our Jesus never fails, dear Father. So she commit her life into your hands, oh God. I pray, oh God, this evening, we will do such, dear Father. So even though death strike us, oh God, on that grand resurrection morning, when there will be a reunion of your people, dear Lord, from around every corner of this earth, all of us will go home to live endless ages with you. Bless us this evening, O oh God. I pray, O oh Lord, that we'll sense the nearness of your coming and we'll get ready to meet with your Father. Be with your man's servant this evening, Lord. Anoint him afresh, O oh God. Put a word in his mouth this evening, O oh God, that will challenge us, O oh God, to live for you, dear Father. And, O oh God, this evening, at the end of it, help us to make a conscious decision, O oh God, to lay our hands in your hands, dear Father, to allow you to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, dear Father. Take the rest of this service into your hands, we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll remain standing as we turn to a sheet and we sing Father along. And you can try that song. Okay. Tempted and tried, we've all made to wonder.
Praise the Lord. Please be seated. As the song reminds us this evening, when death comes and takes our loved ones, leaving the home so lonely and dread, when we don't understand why, friends, this evening, Jesus knows all about it. He understands why. That's why we got to trust him. That's why we got to live for him. May God richly bless us this evening. At this moment, we have our first scripture reading. It will be done by Chanel Dabrio. Oh, sorry, Shania Williams. Shania Williams. It's taken from Revelation 21, 1 to 7. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon, church. This scripture reading is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 to 7. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for this heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, and the beginning and the end. I will give unto him, that is, a toss of the fountain, of the water of life, really. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Thanks be to God. What a friend we have in Jesus. This hymn was Sister Maria's favorite hymn. And even in her last moments, when her health was failing, when this was sung, it will sort of bring back some life to her. I've seen it with my own eyes. It shows how much she had loved this song. And this afternoon, we are going to sing it. I know she can't hear, but we are going to sing it as though she's here. All right? So we're going to sing lustily. You can sit and sing. For, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear.
And now we invite Chanel Dabru to do the second scripture reading. A pleasant good afternoon, everyone. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians 15, 19-26. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we of all men most miserable, but now is Christ risen from the dead and became the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then come at the end, when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Here ends the, end the scripture reading. We will now invite the nephew of the deceased, Kenrick Dabrio, and he's going to do a special tribute. And after this tribute, we will call on Siltios Kane. Siltios, you will come after Mr. Dabrio is finished to do your tribute. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, before I sing my song, I, I was inspired somewhat this morning to write a little bit, because I love to write. And I've decided that I'm going to share what I wrote. Okay? It's just a little page. I hope that it will bring some inspiration and some comfort to someone or everybody if possible. In recent times, I have lost my daughter, brother, father, grandparents, cousin, and other family members and friends, and now my Aunt Maria. But in spite of it all, I didn't lose myself. Instead, I've made changes, I'm more focused, more forgiving, and I've gotten to understand that we can never lose what we didn't own. We were all loaned this our bodies to use for God's glorification and to live according to his commands. Death is part of what we have to go through. And to die in Christ comes with no fear because it is just asleep. Let us all see these deaths not for us to be mourning and to be sad, but for us to make our part right and to secure a place in paradise. To live is to love to be patient, kind, understanding, considerate, forgiving, and to have faith enough to know that in Christ Jesus, everything will be okay. For his promises are still there, and he will never give us more than what we can bear. I do hope that this song that I'm going to sing will be of some comfort to us or to somebody. My song is entitled... Ride out the storm. I think it's a more fitting for what we all are going through right now. You've been in the storm, seems like forever. Nights of confusion have been so long. Your ship has lost anchor And the storms have you drifting Your night's almost over You can ride out your storm Ride out your storm God is there You may not feel it You're not alone You're hurting now 
but your morning it is coming. Just hold on to Jesus, oh Lord, and write out your story. Just remember God's promise. Yeah. I'll never leave you. raging they'll do you no harm don't give up the battle for your answer it is coming just hold on Feeling 
answer is coming. Your answer is coming now. Just hold on, hold on, hold on. Right out, right out your storm. Good afternoon, everyone. This poem is a tribute to my late Aunt Maria on behalf of my mother, Sylvina, my sisters, and myself. You have suffered, Auntie, long enough. You are brave, strong, and tough. The battle you fought was long and hard. But it's okay, Auntie. Let go and let God. It has hurt all of us when you left that day. It left us broken hearted with nothing to say. I don't want to be selfish and say, please don't leave, because I do not want to hurt or grieve. We know in our hearts you're in a better place. <laughs> we know in our hearts you're in a better place. <laughs> but I swear we are going to miss your beautiful face. We are going to miss the talks we would have and the stories you used to tell that made us laugh. God just needed you to come home. Yes, we know it has left the family so. You will always be remembered every single day, from the smile on your face to the things you would say. You have taken your space in heaven right where you belong, right up there with your nephew, your niece, your brother, your dad, and your mom. Yes, we all know that we need to be strong, but through the family, your memory will live on. You don't have to fight anymore. Just let go and let God. While you were here on earth, you did your job. You did your part to keep your family together. That's why you will remain in our hearts always and forever. Love, Siltius, Lisa, Nash, and Sylvina. As was mentioned earlier, that Sister Maria, she was a member of this church. And at this time, I would invite Elder Springer to do a tribute on behalf of the church. All right, good afternoon again to everyone. You know, I'm Maria. Was my friend. You know, she is someone who I relate with well. So this evening, Maria will often say that she was in this church from a child. You know, Maria have the privilege. I believe she, from a young age, she was in to this, the Adventist church. And like all of us, Maria have her challenges, her ups and her downs. A few years ago, Maria recommit her life to the Lord. And not too long after that, she have some she have some health challenges. But the good thing is that even as she was going through her health challenges, she 
know that she can trust in God. And while visiting her, about two or three weeks before she passed, I got the privilege to go visit and pray with her one Saturday evening. And as we sing and I relate to her, I speak to her, I present the scripture to her. Maria, she said to me that when, when you're young and you're strong and you're, you're so forth, you have your strength, you, you get own way and so forth. You want to do your own thing. But she said, where I am here now, the only one who can help me is Jesus. I said, praise the Lord when I heard her say that. She recognized that the only help she has now, you know, we can go and pray. We can help. There are folks who will go in, like, um, you made a name now. Susan, yes, I meet Susan there who tend to her, you know. Susan can go and tend to her and try to comfort her. But the thing is that, friends, when we lay on our dying bed and when we know death is before us, the only one who we can get true comfort from is God. You know? And that makes me feel real happy when Maria recognizes that only God can help her in this time. You know, and um, Jesus speak a parable. He said that he went out in the morning, maybe at nine o'clock, and he gathered some workers and he sent them to work. He went back at 12 and he gathered some more workers, he sent them to work. He went back in the evening and he gathered some and he sent them to work. But when pay time come, those in the morning want more than them in the evening. Jesus said, no. When you come, you come. Everybody will receive the same pay. I just want to say to us this evening, God have his time. God have his time when he will call every one of us. The, the, the thing is that we don't know when he will call us. You know? He don't, we don't know when. So, Maria, she got the chance and she prepared to meet her God. You know? It was just like a burden lift off of me that evening when I visited her. And I pray with her. And I say, Maria, you have to pray too. You have to pray now. You know? And she pray and she call out to God. And she asks God for forgiveness. And, 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 and she pray and cry out to God. And I feel so happy about that. You know? The thing is that this journey is not about the starting, brethren. How we finish. How we finish. You know, if we could come early, better yet. If when we're young, we could give our life to Christ, better yet. And I thank God, about 31 years now, I give my life to Christ. You know, and I say praise God. Thank him for where he has brought me from. To the family members, I want to say to you, her sons, four sons Maria have, right? Five sons? What? Maria nearly had half a cricket side, man. Yes. You know, I want to say to you, you are young. Take Jesus in your life. The best thing we can do with our life is to give our life to Christ. On behalf of the church, I just want to extend our sympathy and I want to say to you, you know, you have been in our prayers. We have been praying for you. 
and we will not stop. We'll continue to pray for you. So I pray that by God's grace, you will hold on to God and change in hand and make that commitment to solve him. May God richly bless you. At this time, we want to, to give way to Mr. McBarnett as he, he comes to do a special tribute. And after his voice, the next voice you will hear is that of Mrs. Cheryl John Hacksha as she brings to us the eulogy. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> My son is titled um, <laughs> I went to the house where I used to live. The grass has grown up and it covered the door. Someone across the street said, I know who you seek, but Maria, she don't live here anymore, for she is somewhere around the throne of God, somewhere around the throne of God, I keep searching and searching.
Good afternoon, church. The eulogy for Marie Maria Louise Pompey. And let me begin by saying all of the words that I've penned here are from family members and her sons. The late Marie Maria Louise Pompey was born on the afternoon of April 5, 1968 in Bellevue to the late Jessalyn Pompey and Albert Williams. She was born second of her twin sister, Theresa. That said afternoon, according to her eldest Al sister, Alvina, who resides in Tortola, her mother's water bag broke after having a bowl of soup for her early dinner. And this prompted their father to send her and her brother Gordon to call the midwife, the late Miss James at Park Hill. After delivering the message to Mrs. James, they did not wait on her and returned home. While on their way home, their father met them part of the way and said, Girl, your mama get twins. Now, if you know that journey, it's over the hill at number two, all the way up to junction, that's one route, or number two, through Wrong Hill and Village to get to Miss James. So that was quite a walk. Now, this was a shock to them as their mon mommy was on her way. She was pregnant with twins. Not even the late nurse Mills, who was a nurse at Connery Clinic, realized that. And Alvina assisted in caring for Maria throughout her early years and has fond memory, childhood memories. Maria was the sister of Alvina, Silvina, Solita, Lorna, Theresa. I don't know what's with it, with the A and the R. Theresa, her twin. Eustace, better known as Brain, Garden, Glaston, Terry, Ezekiel, and Alston, Paddy, now deceased. She was the mother of five sons, Shannon, Travis, Mitch, Devon, and Kyle. She was grandmother to Shania, Jaden, Melody, Trinity, and Malik. She was the relative of several nieces, nephews, and numerous cousins, in-laws, and close friends. We gather here today with heavy hearts to remember and celebrate the life of Maria, a remarkable individual who touched the lives of so many. Maria obtained her primary education at the Connery RC School. It is always assumed that the twin who was the last to be born is always the weaker. But that is not the opinion of Theresa, her twin. She said that growing up as twins, she was the one who would always get sick. The mother would always say that Maria was the stronger one because Theresa had asthma, belly ache, migraine, everything she got, but Maria remained strong. And according to her, she said, sometimes I used to ask, why me? Maria just didn't get sick. However, one day while she was living overseas, that is Theresa, she called me and said she was diagnosed with cancer. And that was the saddest part of growing up as twins, knowing that your partner is sick. I never got over it, and now she is gone. But there is one significant thing that will stay with us all. Theresa confessed to feel every pain that her twin felt from birth, pains right up to her death. On the night Maria passed, she was the one to call Suzanne, Maria's cousin and caretaker, and inform the household that Maria had just died. And when they did their check, it was indeed true. According to her, she felt all her pain that night, and she left at approximately 11 o'clock. Her words to us, I just want to say, as a twin to another th twin, it is not easy when your partner is sick and dying. It is a lot going on, you who is not the sick one. Now, if one was to describe Maria, you can categorize her like this. Love of God, her strength, love for her family, hard work, her garden, her flowers, and her sauciness. Maria gave birth to five handsome sons, here they are before us, whom she loved dearly. Shannon, Travis, Mitch, Devon, and Kyle. They were bought and braced properly by this strong woman. 
Her way of chastisement might, not, might have appeared to them a little rough, but that was a cover-up for the level of love that she had, she held for all of them. And asked Uncle Sugars, he will justify it for you. And this is how Devon penned it. Mom was a hard-working person, never liked to be at home and not working. She was always willing to go out to look for jobs, no matter how far it was. She used to love to dress up and keep herself neat. She loved the sport of cutting tree tree even when she had stopped eating them. Most of all, she loved the flowers. That was her heart and soul. To Kyle, who is the baby, he was always foot to foot, almost everywhere with his mom. He's thankful for the mem memorable yet disciplined up upbringing he received. He witnessed a persistent mother who ensured she did her absolute best to secure the provision of love, food, shelter, and independence for her children. To Travis, he also spoke of his mom as being a hard worker. These are his words. Mommy did everything, every type of hard work a woman of us Tatia go run from. She never backed down from any opportunity to earn a little money as long as it was honest job, no matter how far away it was, she went. She did construction work, road work, working at the Connery School talk shop, to even landing a job to clean the compound itself and many more. She was a go-getter, someone myself and my four other brothers looked up to in life. She's sleeping in heaven now, but she left a legacy behind for us to take motivation from. Even when the odds are against us, we can push like she did. There will never be another like her, strong and beautiful and truly one in a million. Take your rest now in the arms of our Savior. Say hi to Daddy for, for me. Mommy, I love you. And Travis, that's your words. Shannon, her firstborn, also experienced the foot-to-foot -foot movement growing up with her mom, his mom in Bellevue. He said, growing up in my mama's heart because I couldn't even leave the yard. She used to say to me, don't follow company because you don't know if they're good or bad. And Shannon, I'm going to tell you, what you didn't know was that your mother and siblings were brought up in the strictest manner at the top of the hill. Going to church and most of the socialization was together as a family. So it was not going to the neighbor's yard to play all the time or leaving you with a neighbor. Hence the foot-to-foot -foot phrase. When my mom... And he continued, when my mom met Frankie from Connery, they were the best years of my life. Because I didn't grow up with a father and Frankie treated me like his own. I just want to say thank you, Frankie. Your contribution made me the man I am today. Living in Connery for him was nice. When Tree came in Connery River, my mother will tell me, let's go down to Catry Tree. I didn't know one thing about catching Tree Tree, but my mom showed me everything about it. But my mother's real love was her flowers. Her yard was filled with flowers. I used to ask her, Mommy, can you eat flowers? She will watch me and say, leave my flowers alone. I know she loved us in her own way. She worked very hard as a single mother. She never depended on handouts, but believed in working hard for her own money. And it's repetitious, but that's the way they knew it. Even when she was sick, she was still going to work. Mommy, I will miss your beautiful smile. I love you, Mom. I really do. Travis. Travis. I'm certain he would say what he has to say in his own time. Maria made sure her children were always well detired and attired. And that's how I remembered, not Travis, Mitch. That's how I remembered Mitch. Always well dressed, going down the road with her mom with his mom. Maria was outgoing, glamorous, and loved life. She was bold and was, was not afraid to speak her mind. So if you did not agree with her, it did not mean you were in her bad book sometimes. And it was always good to see that impish smile and grin coming through at the end. Mind you, not everyone received that smile. You didn't want to be at the end of her wrath. I was told by Ezekiel Sugar, her brother, that he particularly loved Maria's cul culinary skills. She was a good cook, and he enjoyed her food. He also remembers her saucy tongue when she is annoyed, when she was annoyed. 
There was also no doubt that she loved her boys dearly. Brian, her eldest brother, said that Maria was just Maria, and he loved her very much. As, he lay, as she lay on her sick bed, he constantly told her that he loved her. Maria had an unshakable strength that carried her through life's challenges. She was not one to sit down and wait for handouts. She got up and get. That strength came from the backbone, backbone of their upbringing. They were introduced to hard work at a very young age, going to the mountain, coming back on the donkey with every kind of provision you can think about. I don't think Maria got to do a lot of that, but the older siblings like Paddy and God, and maybe Glaston, were exposed to that. In the latter stage of her life, when disease ravished her body, Maria rekindled her faith and love for God. Having been raised up in a Seventh-day Adventist home, she returned to her first love and was reminded of the God who saves, keeps, and satisfies. On her dying bed, when pain ravished her body, she audibly called out to God and prayed and sang as we sang songs of assurance in God with her. When the pain was too much, she lifted her arms in total surrender. To the siblings, she was transitioned to be with her God where there's no more pain. To her children, hold on to the memories. I see your pain in your, in your eyes and your countenances. Love each other. To Susan, you have been a wonderful cousin and can't caretaker, Susan, and you are incomparable. I was there when Susan came and Maria cried, Susan, you are the one who should be here with me. And she said, I'm here, I'm not going anywhere. She was your cousin, but you were also her friend. You took over Maria's household and cared for her to the end. I marvel at the type of care you gave, and the family is grateful. May God continue to bless you and broaden your territory. To all the children, siblings, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, cousins, in-laws, friends, be comforted. Shannon, Devon, Kyle, Mitch, and Travis, be comforted. Stick to each other. Maria, take your rest. You ask that when you died, you, your grave must be covered with flowers. May you be crowned with roses as you rest in the arms of your Savior. We love you in life and we love you in death. Sleep in eternal peace. Maria. Now someone might ask, why are you having the service downstairs and not upstairs? For the past few weeks, we have had some challenges with the roof upstairs, and so we, we were forced to come downstairs to worship. And thank God he provided somewhere for us to worship. And we have been trying had to rectify the problem. In fact, we were working tirelessly to ensure that it was done before so we can have this service upstairs, but we were not able to achieve that. Hopefully sometime during the course of this week, we would finish the job. Hence, that's the reason why we are having the service downstairs. Now, the one who's going to break the bread of life for us today the one who's going to present the word is a very young man, Jamel Providence. I know that many of you would have seen him around because he's a bit gypsy, you know, so you would have seen him somewhere in the district because he is the, the pastor for this central Windward district of Seventh-day Adventists. And the district comprises of this church, Covenant in South Rivers, Georgetown, and Ebenezer, Orange Hill, sorry. And Pastor Providence, it's evident that he has a passion for pastoral ministry. 
we have seen him in action and he he likes walking with the people in the community in fact if you are having a, an issue he's always there and ready to assist so you can call him now pastor providence is someone who is full of energy and you will see that when he comes to present the word so this afternoon I want to, you to give him your undivided attention as he break the word to us. But just before he comes, we are going to listen to a special tribute from Shani Johnson and family. And after this tribute, the next voice you would hear is that of Pastor Providence. Anxiety bells in 
Amen. Or it could be better than that. Amen. Amen. Praise God. God is good, everybody. And all the time. Has God been good to somebody here this evening? Has God been good to you? He woke you up this morning. I show you had something to eat today. You have clothes on your back. You can feel your skin. You can walk. You can talk. You can see. And that's enough to give God thanks for. Amen. Everything may not be going good in your life. But God is still good. You may not have all that you want. But you have enough to give God thanks for. You have a lot of desires. But he has provided all of your needs thus far. And if he has done it before, he can do it again. He has saved me. He has done it for others. And indeed, he can do it for you. It doesn't matter if you don't see it right now. Just hold on a little bit longer. Ride out your storm. Because Jesus is in your vessel this evening. We serve a mighty God, ladies and gentlemen. We serve a risen Savior. We serve one who never fails. And I don't know about you, but I've been serving God for how many years? And, and, and I could say that a lot of you have been serving him for longer than I. And he has never failed me yet. And he has never failed all of you as yet. And I don't think that he is ever intending to do so. Because we're all looking forward to that great and glorious day. When he will burst that cloud. And he will come to call those who are dead in Christ. To reign supremely with him. And if you are alive and you remain here on earth, you shall be caught up in glory to see his face. I, I, just want to came, I just want to encourage somebody this afternoon today to just hold on to the everlasting arm of Jesus. Don't turn back. Don't fall away. Just continue serving Jesus. The best life you could live is a life surrendered to Jesus Christ today. I greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus, your soon coming King, on the behalf of the church and its leadership, want to extend the sincere condolences and we share in sympathy with you as you grieve the loss of your dear loved one, a mother, a sister, a friend, an aunt, and for us a member, we all share in this point in time, the loss. But as was said when we visited her, I was so happy to see her even though she was in her pain, she was still praising God. Even though she was sick and she was there on her bed, she was lying on her bed and at that point in time she was being fed. You know when she said, put down the food, put down the food. We're going to pray and praise. And even in her midst of her pain, she praised God. And that is something that stood out with me. That is something that really reminded me that once we are in Christ, the, the peace and the everlasting assurance that we have in Christ, even in the midst of our pain, we can still praise God. That is something that really stuck with me. And I'm sure just by hearing from the family, she was one that was really in tune and committed to serving God. And as it was that she was that way, I pray that those of you who are in the hearing of my voice, both in this physical space that we are, and the online platform, is my hope and prayer that after this message, and even following her life, you will give your heart to Jesus Christ. Bow with me as we pray. Father, as we gather in this place this afternoon, God, to celebrate the life of Maria, we give you thanks, O oh God, for the time that she was here on earth. Father, we thank you for keeping her. We thank you, O oh Father God, that you have blessed her of the person that she was their father. And Father, now that she is resting here, God, in peace there, Father, she's here with us because we haven't laid her to the ground as yet. 
But, O oh God, as your word said that the living know that they shall die. But the dead, O oh Father God, know nothing. We even now ask, O oh God, that those of us who are in the hearing of my voice, dear God, that they will receive the word that you have planted on my heart for them, that they too, as Maria would have done, surrender their hearts to you, is our humble asking in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to speak to you on the topic for today. I will rise again. I will rise again. The scripture reading I'm going to use is a very familiar portion of scripture coming from John chapter 11. And we will know this story as the story of Lazarus. You know that story, right? Oh, you know the story? Yes. Name Lazarus. Of Bethany, the tongue of Mary and Martha. There, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man might be glorified thereby. This sickness, Jesus said, is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of Man, the Son of God, might be glorified thereby. I want to just highlight something here today, ladies and gentlemen, that the Bible says here that Lazarus was sick. I said Lazarus was sick. And the Bible says here that Mary and Martha sent to call Jesus because their brother Lazarus was sick. Jesus, when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he said that this sickness is not unto death, but for his glory. I want you to recognize something here with me today, that the Bible says that Jesus loved Lazarus. I said, Jesus loved Lazarus. Oftentimes at the point of death, we often question whether or not Jesus loved our loved ones because they died. But the Bible says here that Jesus loved Lazarus. I want to let you know today that Jesus loved Maria. Jesus loves every one of you here today and all those who would have passed on before jesus loved them too but you see death is something that we are not assured of death is something that has no respect of age death is something that has no respect of name death is something that has no respect of position in society Death is something that does not have respect of age. Death is something that doesn't respect the color of your skin. It doesn't respect the gender or that you carry. It doesn't respect where you live. It doesn't respect who you are. But all you have to do to die is live. So everyone that is living here today has an appointment with death. Death is going to come at your door at some point in time. You could be asleep and death can come. You can be alive and death can come. You could be sitting in your chair and death can come. You could be driving your vehicle and death can come. You could be running and death can come. You could be sick and death can still come at your door. You could be a baby in a mother's womb and death can still come at you. You can be a stillborn child and death can come at you. You could be old and in wheelchair and walking and limping and death could come at you. You could be young and sprightly as I am and death can come at you. Yeah. 
And if you follow the Bible very well, you would realize even more that Mary and Martha and Lazarus were close friends with Jesus. Bosom buddies, as you might say. Ride or die. I have my back, you have yours and whatever. They were good friends. But Jesus said, this sickness is not unto death, but for my glory. If you follow along the story very well, you will realize that Jesus was coming from a far place. Jesus could have arrived on the scene sooner than he did. But the Bible says here that Jesus delayed for a few times. He did not delay his coming for one day. He didn't delay it for one minute. Not two days. Not three days. But Jesus delayed his time four days. By that time, ladies and gentlemen, Lazarus was dead and dead earth. Lazarus was at a point of rot, full of stench, and he was already buried, if you please. Furthermore, to that, back in those days, he, he, he was already covered in linen and placed in a room. And not only just placed in a room, but a big stone was covering that space. And Jesus shows up on the scene. Mary and Martha, they vex with Jesus. From the time they call him till he come, they did not even want to talk to Jesus when he came on the scene. Ladies and gentlemen, we can be just like Mary and Martha sometimes. Sometimes we are praying to God, asking him for a miracle, asking him for a breakthrough, asking him for deliverance. And Jesus decides that he's going to delay a little bit. He's going to say to you, you need to just hold on a little bit longer. You need to just go through this challenge so I can bless you bigger. You need to walk through this storm because I am the captain of the sea. You need to go through this difficulty because at the end of it, I have a great reward for you. You need to just hold on a little bit longer. But sometimes we like to have a microwave relationship with Jesus. That if we ask him now, we want him to answer yesterday. If we ask him today, we want him to answer 10 years before. But I came by to let somebody know that Jesus' time and your time is not the same. But I came by to let you know today that when Jesus shows up on the scene, when Jesus shows up in your life, it is going to be the best time that you ever had. He's always late, but he's always on time. You may not understand it, you may not believe it, but I came by to proclaim it that Jesus' timing is the sweetest time that you can ever find. Mary and Martha, fix with Jesus. How could you show up so late? The man done dead. How could you show up so late? Some of you might be asking. My child long gone. How could you show up so late, Jesus? I'm already sick. How could you show up so late, Jesus? The man don't leave me. Or the woman done gone. I don't get the boot already. Yeah. How could you show up so late, Jesus? I don't have no money to send my child to school tomorrow. How could you show up so late, Jesus? I don't have no money to pay Vinlek. They came and they cut me off. How could you show up so late, Jesus? Oh, God, is you too late, God. My bill don't cut off. I don't end the pain. And I don't cry in Jesus. How could you show up so late in my life? I can hear some of you asking Jesus, how could you show up so late? But I came by to let you know today that Jesus is always on time. Ladies and gentlemen, don't ever be vexed with Jesus. Don't ever be vexed with Jesus. 
Something might happen in your life and you don't understand it. But the song says, trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to just trust and obey. Jesus shows up. And you know when Jesus showed up on the scene, all evil had to scatter. No devil in hell could surround himself around Jesus. When Jesus shows up on the scene, all problems disappear. When Jesus shows up on the scene, sickness has to run. Death has to run. The devil has to run. Uh, and some of you might have to run to have mercy. But when Jesus shows up on the scene, he assessed the situation. He looked around and saw the people crying. He looked around and saw Mary and Martha upset. They did not even want to talk to him or give him a glass of water. He looked around and see all these people have turned against him. Because this friend of yours, this friend of yours who, 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 who have been a good friend to you, have you, you have turned against him and you have allowed him to die. They, I could imagine they probably wanted to stone Jesus. But here comes Jesus. And he said unto Mary and Martha. He said, Thy brother shall rise again. He said, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Martha knew the scripture because the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. When Jesus Christ comes and he bursts that cloud, the dead in Christ shall rise first and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up. Martha believed that scripture and she quoted that scripture before him. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. Ladies and gentlemen, Martha was looking forward for a resurrection. Martha was looking forward for that event. But Martha did not realize that she was speaking to the resurrection and the life. Martha didn't realize that Jesus was the one who have already conquered death and the grave. Martha didn't realize that Jesus had the power to raise the dead to life. Martha didn't realize that Jesus came on the scene. Though he seemed to be late, he was just on time because he was just about to show her the power and the glory that is due unto Jesus Christ because only Jesus can resurrect your dead situation today. I can you imagine some of you right now are in a Lazarus experience. You know, at funerals, we don't preach to speak to the dead. The dead, dead. She can't hear nothing. But all of you here can hear what I'm saying. And I'm saying to you this afternoon that there might be some of us here sitting and listening to my voice. And in your current situation, you have some dead bones in your life. You feel as if all is about to be over for you. You look around your life and you don't see the way that you're going to make it to the end of the month. You look at your children and you're wondering, Lord, when will they change their lives? Some of you are heartbroken and even wondering in your own self. When will I recognize my need for Jesus? Some of you who are here in the hearing of my voice knows the truth unto salvation, yet still you allow yourself to disobey God and do as you feel like. And you might think that you have sinned so much that Jesus cannot save you. To you, you feel like Mary and Martha, that Jesus has betrayed you. That he did not show up on time when you needed him. 
But I came by to let somebody know this afternoon that when Jesus showed up on the scene, Mary and Martha, they were upset with him. But he came by because he came as the resurrection and the life. Jesus came at that scene to raise Lazarus from the dead. And today, he has come to speak to you, to tell you that though you are dead in your sin, you can be made alive again. Though you are dead in your weakness, you can regain strength. Though you are dead in your hopelessness, there is hope for you. And though you might be dead in your grief and your pain and your crying and your tears, Jesus is here to let you know that I am the comforter. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the, the end. I am the living water. Uh, from me you can get living water. I am the bread of life. Though you might be hungry, Jesus can feed you, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus is here today to let somebody know that he is the mighty healer, the great provider. He is the comforter. He is our friend. He is our redeemer. And ladies and gentlemen, he is our savior. When Jesus came, he asked Martha, where did you lay him? And I could imagine Martha and Mary there pushing up their mouths. He did over this. Rude and out of place. Probably point and say, look him over there. We don't bury him already. The stone on in front of there already. Where come here for? Then Jesus gave her a simple instruction. He said, roll that stone away. Roll that stone away. And the good thing is, here's what I love about Mary and Martha in this story. Even though they were upset with Jesus, they still believe in him. Even though they were vexed, they were still obedient. Some of us, we vex with Jesus and we do as we feel like thinking we're doing him something. But you think when you disobey God, you're doing him something? No. You're doing your own self bad. But Mary and Martha recognize that Jesus is more powerful than I am. Mary and Martha recognize that this Jesus is the one who I must obey. And so as he instructed them, roll away that stone, they roll away the stone. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is speaking to you today. Roll away the stone of your disobedience. Roll away the stone of your stubbornness. Roll away the stone of your own way behavior. Roll away the stone of your disobedience and follow me and obey me. Roll away the stone of your upset life. Roll away the stone of your past and leave it behind. Because Jesus is here to give you a new start, a new beginning, a fresh anointing. He is here today to bring your dead situation to life today. So as they rolled away the stone, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus did not have to go into the room. I said, Jesus didn't have to go into the room. He stood outside and he spoke and Lazarus came forth. I said he stood outside and he spoke the word and Lazarus came forth. That reminded me about the time of creation when God recognized that the earth was without form and darkness filled the earth and he just spoke a word and he said let there be light and there was light. He said let us make man 
and man came forth. He said, let me make the heaven and the earth. And the heaven and the earth came forth. Let me form the sea and the rivers and the fishes and everything on earth. And the plants and the trees and everything came forth. He didn't come down and put his hand. But the only thing that he did is when he was about to make man, he came down and he formed man from the dust of the ground. And he gave him the breath of life, ladies and gentlemen. And man became a living soul. And the Bible says, dust you came forth and dust you shall go back. So when we live a life, we live a life should be pleasing to God. We cannot carry nothing in the grave. We didn't bring anything on earth and therefore we cannot carry nothing back. So when you get your positions, you have to give God thanks because it's only the goodness of God have brought you where you are today. It's only the goodness of God allowed you to have what you have today. The position that you have is because of Jesus. The car that you are driving is because of Jesus. The life that you are living is because of Jesus. So don't be selfish and don't be bad-minded because everything you have is because of Jesus. As he gave it to you, he can take it away from you. So from dust you came and dust you shall return. Maria came forth and she lived her life and she blessed all of you. But there is nothing she can carry in the grave. She can't dig up her house and carry it with her. She has to go back just as she came. Just as she came. So the word of God says... That when Jesus spoke the word, Lazarus come forth. Lazarus came forth. And I could imagine the awe on the face of Mary and Martha. I could imagine the surprise and how shame they felt because they were upset with Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus loves to do this, you know. When we think that he cannot, he likes to show us that he can. Because I remember the scripture says to me that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And it is the power of God that lives in me that I am able to say to that mountain, move and it shall be moved in Jesus' name. And the Bible says, if only, if only we have faith as small as a mustard seed. Oh, we can move mountains, ladies and gentlemen. If only Mary and Martha had faith, they could have spoken and moved that stone. But Jesus had to come himself and speak in their lives and let them know it is only through faith can you serve Jesus Christ. It is only through faith can you see miracles in your life. It is only through faith can healing be done in your life. It is only through faith can resurrection come for your dead situation. It's only through faith can your children be changed. It is only through faith can this community be healed. It is only through faith can St. Vincent and the Grenadines become the land of the blessed again. It is only through faith can we see faith and works in the name of Jesus Christ. We cannot do it on our own because we need Jesus in our life. We need Jesus in our homes. We need Jesus in our country. We need Jesus in our community. We need Jesus in our hearts today. And it's only to the faith and the blood of Jesus Christ can anything be made whole. Because we are living in a broken world. We are living in broken homes. We are living broken marriages. We are living broken life. Messed up situation. And we are wondering, when can I get healed? When will I be made whole again? How will my situation be fixed? But I came by to let you know it is only true the blood of Jesus Christ here today. And as I come down to close here today, want to let you know
this miracle recorded in scripture here today happened not just to let Mary and Martha and all those who are wrong know about the power of Jesus. But every situation, every parable, every story in the Bible is to let us know today the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Bible reminds us in the book of Revelation, as was, as was read earlier in the scripture, that there is coming a time, ladies and gentlemen, there is coming a time when Jesus will come again. <clears throat> Jesus is coming again. And ladies and gentlemen, the story reminds us as, as, as what we are experiencing here in 2023. Because all of you in here would be saying, since I was a baby, I heard Jesus was coming and I can't see him yet. Mary and Martha, they were waiting four long days and they didn't see Jesus. But he came and he showed up on the scene. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that Jesus will come yes. as a thief in the night. You might be think that you're living your own life and you think that everything is okay. Yes. And he's not going to come because you hear it from since you were small. Since your grandmother and your great-grandmother are alive, they're done dead and gone. And you still hear, you have children and grandchildren, but still they can't see Jesus. You think you have time. You think you have everything in your own life going on there. But Jesus will show up on a time when you are least expecting him. And there are going to be many surprises when Jesus Christ comes. Ladies and gentlemen, my encouragement to you today is don't be caught off guard. Don't be caught weary. Don't be caught weighed in the balance. Ah, the Bible says today is the acceptable time for you to accept Jesus Christ. If you hear the word of God, harden not your heart, but answer him and cry out to him. Lord, I surrender all today. Because when Jesus comes, ladies and gentlemen, he's coming to put an end to death. He's coming to put an end to pain. He's coming to put an end to pain like bills. He's coming to put an end to all back and all on earth. And he's coming for a resurrected people. He's coming to resurrect those who are dead in Christ. And he's coming for those who are obedient to him. And ladies and gentlemen, the sad thing is that there is going to be a group of people that will not make it in the everlasting life. They will not make it to cross Jerusalem. They will not make it to see the sea of glass. I don't wish for any of you to be in that group. But I wish that all of you today, if you know that your life is not wrapped up in the arms of Jesus Christ, I came by to let you know today that now is the time. Today is the day. This moment is the moment. Do not delay, but just give your heart to Jesus Christ. I know that at <clears throat> the point of death, it's always painful. But we are assured, the word of God says, and weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus is going to put a joy in your life again. Jesus will comfort you, my dear family and friends. Jesus knows each and every one of us hearts here today. Some people honor God with their mouth, but their hearts are far away from him. The encouragement for us today, today, is do not leave this place and your heart is still far from God. Come home, ladies and gentlemen. Accept Jesus. You know, I wish the church could be full like this every Sabbath. I wish when I come here on a Sabbath, I see people outside. They go force us to put a bigger building in the community. Yeah, I wish. Your encouragement, friends, follow Jesus. Trust and obey him. You might not see 
the miracle in your life right now. It might be difficult for you right now. But the Bible reminds us that everything works together for good to them that love the Lord. And I believe that all of you here today, somewhere in your heart, you love the Lord. And you know the Lord. You know what he has done for you. You know what he has done for your family before. Many of you could have been dead. But it's only because of the blood of Jesus Christ over your life. That's why you are here today. And the only thing that you can do to say thanks to Jesus is to give him your heart. So the call for us today. Who wants to give God thanks today? Just raise your hand for me. You, God has been good to you. You just want to give him thanks. Just lift your hands today. So thank you, Jesus. He has been good to every one of you. We want to say thanks to Jesus. And if you are here today, you haven't given your life to Jesus as yet. Just slip your hands up. I will see your hand. You will talk after. You want to say, God, I want to try this Christian life. You want to say, God, I, I don't understand everything, but there's something I want to understand eventually. You are saying today, Pastor, I, 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 I'm struggling. I need help. Just raise your hand where you are. You need help. Jesus is here to help us all. For what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my prayer that God will bless you. That he will keep you. That he will cause his face to shine upon you. And give you peace. In Jesus' blessed name. Amen. Amen. At this point in time, I invite the family members to stand. All family members stand. As we melodiously as we melodiously reflect on the song, what a friend we have in Jesus. I invite all family members to just press forward the altar. Let us surround the coffin as we are about to do that prayer of comfort for the family let's press forward where you are as we minister to you in prayer This indeed is a big family. And I'm pretty sure that this is not all. I want to say to all of you here today, family is important. Family should mean a lot to everybody. Because sometimes when your friends and your co-workers and everybody else they just not seem to be around 
somehow family will just be there to show up. And so I want to encourage us at this moment to stay close to each other. Love each other. Support each other. Call one another. If there's any strife among the family, if there's any bacchanal, if there's any unsettled business, work it out. If you have to cuss one another, cuss. Say how you feel. But at the end of the day, make up. At the end of the day, forgive where forgiveness is needed. Don't hold anything against each other. I'm sure that Maria was one who would fight for the family to stay together. And she would want to see everybody living in love and supporting each other. So at this moment, I invite all of you, you're standing here before me, just hold somebody's hand next to you. Hold somebody's hand. Hug them if you have to hug them. And let us pray. Holy, holy, holy is our God Almighty. The one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Father, we come before you, dear God, because you are worthy of our praise. We come before you, O God, because your name is mighty to be praised, Lord. For great is our God. Wonderful are his works. And he never failed us before, and he will never fail us again. You are the Alpha and the Omega God. The beginning and the end. The first and the last and our dearest friend. Yeah. For what a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Yeah. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Today mighty God we bring before you this family. We ask, O oh God, that your precious blood will be upon them, God. We ask, O oh God, that your arms will open wide and receive them unto yourself. That you will comfort them in the moment of their grief right now, O oh Father God. That you will give them the blessed assurance, O oh Father, that you are with them, O oh God, in their time of pain. That you will give them the, the assurance, O oh God, that you have never leave them nor forsake them, O oh Father. May they run to you, O oh God. May they trust you. May they look to you, O oh Father God, for help, for strength, O oh Father God, in their time of need, O oh Father. I pray, O oh God, that you will provide for them. I pray, there, God, that you will cover them. I pray, O oh God, that you will protect them, O oh Father. And Lord, I pray that you will help them to love one another, to forgive each other, to support each other, dear Father, to be there for one another, to listen to each other, dear God, to understand each other, dear Father God. And may this family be binded with cords that cannot be broken, dear Father God. Keep them strong, oh Father God, we ask that even in this moment of grief, dear Father, though they may not understand what is happening or they may not understand why they would have lost their loved one as the song says father along we'll all understand it father along we'll understand why so help them to cheer up one another to cheer up themselves oh father god because we'll soon understand it when you come to receive us oh god save them for your for your everlasting kingdom oh god and may your blessings rain upon them. May you keep them. May you cause your face to shine upon them. And give them your peace, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all.
Okay, we will sing our closing hymn, Will Your Anchor Hold in the Storms of Life. Thank you. 
say that happy way. Chance, you get a chance, I'm fine. <laughs> God is good, God is good. So we want to give God thanks. You get, you get a chance, you get a chance. So we want to give God thanks for Hello, give me minutes for time So indeed we want to give God thanks for what he has done for us so far. I know you had a good time coming down. So as we as we begin this part of the service, let's up bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we give you thanks, O oh God, for your blessing. Thank you, God, for the good weather. Thank you, Father God, for bringing us here safely, Lord. And even now, as we are about to witness the laying down of our dear Sister Maria, we pray, O oh Father God, that your Holy Spirit will continue to strive with us, O oh Lord. We pray, there, Father, that we, we will not take this service or not take this witness for granted, O oh God. That we will not live our lives pleasing as we feel like, but, O oh God, according to your riches and glory, and according to your guidance and principles. So have your way now, O oh God. I pray that you will be with us even now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. amen. What's that true?
We seen the body laid to the ground. And for as much as God would have permitted our dear sister Maria to live a life on earth, we now do solemnly commit her body down to the ground. Dust is to dust, is, ashes to ashes. Until that great resurrection morning, where we will see our face again. For as the Bible declares that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Those who are alive and remain, we shall be caught up. So in order for us to see and have a great reunion, we must live a life according to Jesus Christ. May our soul rest in peace. Go ahead.
Finish? Yeah, we're ready to Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. I want to thank the guys for a job well done. Also, we want to thank the musicians always for providing us with good music. Whenever we see the musicians, I always enjoy. Yes, Makes my job easier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I praise God. Praise God. So we are about to pray to close as we get ready to crown. Silence. I'll wait until you finish. Alright, so we are about to pray to close and then we'll have the crowning. But before we do so, I just want to thank on the behalf of the family, everyone who would have come out here to support. Thank to those who would have contributed in whatever way. Thanks to the musicians, thanks to the funeral home. And I just want to encourage all of us not to leave up the family now, but to continue with your calls and your, your presence with them. Continue encouraging them and motivating them even in this time of grief. Grief is a thing that takes a very long time and it takes a lot of effort and dedication. So I want to encourage that we all surround the family, keep them in prayer, keep them in check and let us all support and encourage each other. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for what would have transpired here today. We thank you, God, for the length of life that you would have given Maria. And even now, dear God, as we would have laid her body down to the ground, we pray there, Father God, that you will remember this spot. Mark this spot there, Father God. And so even when you return, you will call her home. We ask even now, dear God, that you will keep us Grant us your Holy Spirit traveling mercies back to where we would have come from. And Father God, I pray even now that this exercise would have been a witness to somebody that they too may even surrender their hearts to you. Have your way now, Holy Spirit, and let your will be done in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's have the song and we'll have a crown.